Ayun, notify lang po namin, i-record namin tong discussion, no? And then we will be posting it as well on YouTube after para lang may mabalikan in case maglag po yung mga net natin. And also as an audio episode kasi may Spotify po ang FMA. So you can check that out. Um, yung title po ng, Spotify, ng podcast namin ay Anong Connect? So yun, uh, in-explore po namin yung mga issues o usapin tungkol sa uh, ICT and human rights. So this will be one of the episodes as well doon. Um, so yun, nakita niyo po kanina yung uh, video introducing FMA but you can also visit our website if any one of you are interested na mag-check out ako ano nga ba yung ginagawa namin. Isa sa programa namin ang Gender and ICT program at tinitingnan namin yung mga ganitong usapin, intersecting issues on um, well, gender and ICT. So included na doon yung online no gender-based violence. And ngayon, andito po tayo sa um, uh, event. So yung title po nito ay Lapagan, Capturing Digital Voyeurism with Philippine Laws or PH Laws. Um, some of you may be familiar kung ano nga ba or sa ano pinagalingan itong Lapagan. So we'll tackle that later kasi we have a guest, um, attorney Alex Casaro. Siya po ang maging main speaker namin and we'll be facilitating um, this discussion. We ourselves are still learning about this topic to be honest. So parang we're still trying to intindihin kung paano nga ba nakaka-apekto yung technology. Kasi minsan sinasabi na parang, oh, it's the same kung ano yung harassment offline, it's the same online. But then again, we look at cases and nakikita namin na grabe siya. Kasi yung internet, iba din talaga yung nature niya pagdating sa uh, pagiging instrument sa violence against women. So pay, parang ganun. Um, that's why uh, we thought of having this discussion. But before anything else, kukol ko na lang po muna yung program officer namin sa Gender and ICT, si Ms. Tina Lopez, para lang din mag-high and mag-introduce uh, pa po um, kung bakit nga ba natin ito ginagawa ngayon na usapin. So good evening, Ms. Teens. Oo, magandang gabi, Janina and Attorney Alex no? and the rest of the team na nandito and of course our participants. So before po tayo mag-umpisa, I'd like to in, uh, ano ba, greet you everyone a National uh, Women's Month. No? Pati doon sa mga kalalakihan na, nag, na participant natin na sa tingin naman namin ay allies no? Nung, sa pag-abante ng mga kababaihan sa iba't ibang usapin na panlipunan. So, ano nga ba yung magiging tema natin ngayong gabi? Um, sa pagkaka alam po no, ng karamihan na nandito, ang ang digital voyeurism ay yung tinatawag naming um non-consensual images uh, or distribution of images sa online spaces ay talamak sa kasalukuyan. Pero taong 2012 nagsimula kaming magmapa ng mga kaso, particular sa usapan ng online gender-based violence at over the years, nakita namin talaga na ang, na ang mga gantong klaseng kaso ay pataas ng pataas. At karamihan sa mga biktima nito ay, of course, pababa, pabata din ng pabata. At malugod naming tinatanggap, of course, ang panyaya ng FMA. At ganun din ang partisipasyon ni Attorney Alex para bigyan tayo ng kamalayan at karunungan kung paano ba natin tutugunan ang ganitong uri ng uh, isyu ang kinakaharap ng mga kababaihan. So magandang gabi at sana may matutunan tayo sa ating tema. So ayun, um, before we head on to introducing Attorney Alex, uh, we will just show a um, short video lang then about the house rules. Where... Ayan, so hope everyone was able to get that. So very general lang naman po yun na reminders about using our chat box, respecting everyone's privacy, and knowing na safe space naman po ito. Um, but then again, para dun din sa mga kakapasok pa lang, we, will, we are recording the discussion and we will be uploading it uh, both sa YouTube namin as an, and as a podcast episode po sa, as a podcast ng FMA titled Anong Connect. So ayun, um, I will now introduce yung main speaker namin which we are very glad to have. We know it's been very busy and alam naman natin lahat na ang Women's Month para sa atin ay isang busy schedule talaga. So natuwa kami na, na um, nag-yes sa invitation si Attorney Alex Castro. Some of you may be familiar na um, tungkol sa kanya but um, I will ask uh, Attorney Alex na lang din to um, share about her work, uh, ano nga ba yung initiatives ng YASH and how uh, has it been, paano siya napunta dito sa kind of work na ito. So good evening, Attorney Alex. Kamusta po? Good evening. Okay naman. 
Ayun. Um, and thank you also pala for having me at inviting me to take part in this event. Ayun, nabanggit mo naman, I'm from YASH, Youth Against Sexual Harassment. Um, yung YASH actually, uh, very interesting topic to, no? uh, close to home. Kasi I remember when we launched, officially, formally launched YASH noong 2018, uh, yung first case na hinandal namin ay uh, voyeurism. Uh, if familiar kayo, di ba yung nauso before na issue ay yung sa PUA Academy, Pickup Artists Academy. Um, yun yung marami kami nakuha mga reports of a Facebook group uh, na nagsishare ng mga NCII. So ito, um, maganda yung topic. I'm very excited actually to discuss yung mga uh, cases that will be presented later uh, kasi maganda mapag-usapan yung mga Um, details, ganyan, kung ano mga remedies natin in certain uh, cases, ano yung mga, sino yung mga pwede natin puntahan, uh, ano yung mga pwedeng services na i-avail for mga survivors, mga ganyan. So, maganda siyang topic. Um, I'm also a, aside from yung Yash, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the current president and the founder of Yash, by the way. But aside from that, I'm also a litigation lawyer. So, we handle, sa firm, we handle a lot of uh, women's and children's cases. Um, marami mga ganito na mga sexual violence cases, whether it's um, uh, offline or online. No? So maganda rin na mapag-usapan yung mga, ayan, kanina yung mga legal remedies, ganyan. Ano ba yung mga itsura? Paano nahahandle yung mga kaso? Anong itsura niyan pag nasampan na sa korte? Paano siya hinahandle ng court? Um, gano'n ba yan katagal na re-resolve? Ito yung mga usual questions eh, na mga legal. So yan, we'll go to that later. But Yeah, that's me. And uh, thank you, Olet, for inviting me. I'm excited to take part in this. Yes, good evening din po. And thank you din po. So, ayun ang na-mention na ni Attorney Alex kung ano yung mapapag-usapan naman talaga natin. So, ano din yung magiging um, direction no, nito. So, uh, that's why siguro okay din i-mention lang namin. No? That's why we're, we're really interested na invite dito yung youth and even people na who respond to cases of online gender-based violence. So, that can be like um, anti-sexual harassment offices ng schools or maybe even just like volunteer groups um, that we see online. So again good evening to everyone who's here. So hindi na kami magpapaano no. We want to delve into the topic na mismo and ask um attorney Alex ano nga ba yung sinasabi nating digital voyeurism. So nasa title na siya, no? digital voyeurism. Pero ano nga ba siya? Um some I, when I encountered this word medyo it feels kind of foreign. Hindi naman talaga natin exactly ma-translate ito to Tagalog to Filipino. Pero ano nga ba sa inyong experience paano niyo po ma-explain yung digital voyeurism at ano yung relation niya dun sa tinatawag na non-consensual intimate image? Um, well, I'll explain yung voyeur, itong digital voyeurism no? uh, as um, a legal concept. Siguro under the law, uh, defined siya as yung non-consensual na taking of uh, photos or images, no? uh, videos ng private parts ng uh, tao or pwede rin of uh, taking of uh, yung videos or photos of a sexual act Uh, na again, nabangit ko kayo non-consensual nga. So, pero uh, ito siguro yung pangalawang aspect of digital voyeurism ay hindi masyadong alam ng mga tao. Ay pwede rin yung uh, may consent, consensual ang taking ng photo or video of private part or sexual act, but yung copying, reproduction, posting, uh, sharing nitong photo and video na to ay non-consensual na. So, mamaya mapag-uusapan na uh, ano ba yun? Uh, pa- Punishable ba? Same penalty ba? Anong pwedeng gawin pagka ganon? Kasi di ba ngayon uso na yung mga cases na pwedeng ganon. Um, consensual, isi-send ko for example sa partner ko ang isang uh, uh, intimate na photo. Pero pag yung mga ganyan, yung mga blackmailing dito na papasok, pag nag-break ganyan, na blackmailing na ipopost ko ganyan, yun non-consensual na. That can also be considered as digital voyeurism. But um, just to clarify also, because we'll be tackling other topics or other um, legal concepts or mga crimes later, no? not just digital voyeurism. Uh, this is just one part of um, yung mga set ng laws natin protecting women from cyber violence. Uh, but I think ito talaga, yung digital voyeurism ay yung pinaka um, prevalent during this time, especially in the age of social media. 
Yeah, ayun. Um, I was just curious kasi na-mention kanina we're still learning about this topic and sa work namin parang may pangangalabit din na um, is this what you can what what we can say revenge porn? Kasi we're hearing then na parang oh, you can't really call it revenge porn. What do you think about that po? It's the same. Um, yung nabanggit ko kanina, di ba? Na um, two acts kasi yan eh na punished under the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. It's not consen- consensual taking of photo and video or consensual taking of photo or video but not consensual sharing, um, copying, reproduction of uh, photo or video. So pwedeng may mga ganon na I think yung revenge porn ay papasok na yun dun sa pangalawang prohibited act. No? Na kahit na consensual naman itong pag-take ng sex video for example, Once na ito na yung may nangyayari dun sa relationship na siguro nag-break eventually, tapos blackmailing, ganyan, masama yung loob, tapos dito na gumagamit ng um, revenge porn, dito na papasok yung non-consensual sharing. So it's still digital voyeurism. It's still punishable under the law. Mm, I see. So it really has, ang laki ng something to do here with yung, yung intention tsaka motivation then with when committing the act. Um, one of the sorry na add ko lang kasi I, I, I remember when you were sharing na yung revenge porn then parang others don't want to use it because it's not actually pornography that it doesn't exist daw para daw sa pleasure ng ibang tao so they don't want to use the word revenge porn and all that so parang yeah very enlightening at least meron din nakakita din natin kung paano din tinitingnan nito ng batas din ngayon, na meron ngayon sa Pilipinas mm-hmm. so ayun thank you for shedding light on that so uh, magproceed na po tayo sa unang case no so babasahin ko lang po mm-hmm. as we flash yung first case um so again ito po yung uh, Itong cases na uh, pina-flash natin, ito po yung namapa ng FMA. Uh, nabanggit kanina ng program officer namin, si Ms. Teens, na nagmamapa kami ng mga cases ng OGBB, online GBB. No? So isa, lahat ito ay galing po doon sa aming um, initiative. So this one, um, ito po ay galing sa Sunstar na report. So it's titled Man 19 Nab for Blackmailing Girl. So ito po ay in Cebu City. So there's a 20, 21-year-old uh, woman named Alexa, so that's not her real name, and nag-start sila mag-message uh, each other via Facebook, the guy was using a pseudonym. Soon in their conversations, the guy began insisting that Alexa send nude photos of herself in exchange for money. As she needed the money to pay for her college education, Alexa immediately grabbed the opportunity and sent her naked photos to him. After sending, Alexa was surprised to find that the guy had blocked her from messaging him. Then on Sunday, Alexa suddenly received a message from an uh, anonymous na tao uh, who sent her um, yung images mismo of her na naked. So the unidenti- unidentified person also messaged Alexa that she must agree to have sex with him or he would post the photos on social media. He also warned Alexa that she must decide before Monday morning or he would post the photos. So ito yung unang kasi natin, attorney Alex. If I were the victim survivor in this case, paano ko po kaya sisimulan yung um, pag-respond sa ganito? Um, sige, I'll start first with uh, yung mga possible laws uh, that we can resort to no? pagdating dito sa particular case na to. Um, and then we can go later dun sa uh, how they come into play, um, paano yung anong considerations, yung risks uh, involved no? pag pili ka ng, ng uh, crime na it's a charge. So ano, po, ano ba muna yung mga na-violate dito? Uh, first is, of course, yung nabanggit natin kanina, uh, violation of the Anti-Photo uh, and Video Voyeurism Act. Um, dito kasi, di ba, ay, uh, we w- I would say consensual yung taking of the photo and the video, or the photo rather, and then sharing it kasi it was for consideration, it was for money. So, ano naman, hindi naman yun non-consensual yung sharing niya. But ito mukhang na-copy, na na-reproduce, no? na-share online. Itong photo na to of her, um, yon ay ano na, non-consensual, so violation pa rin siya of the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. Um, ito pala, uh, just to, to clarify, under that act, yung Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism, uh, hindi lang yung reproduction uh, or yung, yung sharing, no? it's the copying. So having a copy of that photo or video, Um, without the consent, I, that's a violation of the act na in itself. 
Uh, and then what else aside from anti-photo and video voyeurism? Um, grave threats. Ano yun? Dito napapasok din yung uh, pinipilit siya nitong unidentified person to, to have sex with him. Um, otherwise, ipopost yung video, ay yung photo online. What is grave threats? Under the law, it's basically ano, forcing, intimidating anyone uh, to, to do something uh, na against their will. Tapos, um, in, parang ang kapalit nun, kung hindi mo yung gagawin, ay gagawan ka ng, uh, ng masamang bagay amounting to a crime. So dahil dito, uh, di ba, ang gusto niyang gawin ay pipilitin ko siya. So binablackmail ko siya na uh, have sex with me or kung ayaw mo, ipopost ko tong photo mo online. So kita natin that amounts to a crime kasi if you post it online without consent, it's a violation again of the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. And then you're forcing someone through itong threat na to na kapag hindi mo to ginawa, ipopost ko to online, ay Again, grave threats na siya. That's also punishable under the law. So that's number two. Yung number three mo, ito, ito ano lang ha, outside of this uh, situation, but let's just, ano yung mga pwedeng puntahan pa. For example, if uh, natakot talaga si Alexa, uh, hindi siya aware na ito ay grave threat, na punishable siya under the law na just to ano to protect itong photo niya uh, para lang hindi siya ma-share online ay pumayag siya for example ha pumayag siya na dun sa na makipag-sex dito sa unidentified person that can be considered as rape also kasi if you take a look at it ay hindi naman siya consensual talaga that she wanted to do it but because she was intimidated into doing it uh, dahil nga threaten siya, then that can still be considered as non-consensual, therefore it's rape. So ano ba yung mga, just to explain also, what is rape ba? Uh, under the law, there are two kinds of rape. Uh, yung tinatawag natin, yung number one, ay yung rape through sexual intercourse. Um, ito, very limiting siya in a sense na it can only be committed against a woman because element dito sa first kind of rape ang vaginal penetration. So if you have sexual intercourse with a woman, vaginal penetration, may vaginal penetration and then non-consensual siya, that's rape. Meron tayong tinatawag na pangalawang classing rape, yung rape through sexual assault. Ito, any form of rape other than sexual intercourse with a woman or other than yung vaginal penetration. So for example, pwedeng against a woman, pero hindi siya vaginal penetration, uh, penetration siya of some other orifice no, sa katawan, uh, anal orifice for example, ay that's considered as sexual assault, uh, rape through sexual assault. Yung mga rape then against committed against um, biologically male persons is also rape through sexual assault kasi again hindi naman pwede yung vaginal penetration sa kanila biologically. So pwede rin 'yon na if ever pumapunta doon because of this, yung pag-threaten sa kanya. Um, what is the third one? Uh, yung sa, ano na to ulit? Post photos on social media. Ah, cyber, um, cyber, sabi natin, hindi lang photos. If video ang involved dito, or if uh, this person was uh, forced to perform cyber sex with him, hindi yung physical sex, it can be considered a violation of the Anti-Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Uh, ano ba yung, ano, ano, ano yung punishable act under that? Pagka, for example, if you force, um, you don't even have to force. Um, maraming mga, maraming criticisms dito sa provision ng Anti-Cyber Crime Prevention Act because what if, uh, di ba sinasabi natin, um, sex work is work, Paano pagka, uh, kunwari, consensual, ganyan, uh, ang cyber sex uh, for consideration, under the act kasi, any cyber sex for consideration is prohibited. Uh, it's prohibited under the law, it's unlawful, it's illegal. So kahit na consensual siya, uh, but as long as it's for consideration or money, ay punishable siya under the act. So dito kasi, paano pag tumuntong tayo doon na uh, yung 
yung pagpupwer sa kanya no to have sex ay is done online or through cyber means ay pwedeng ganon. Pwede siya mag-fall under that. So again, meron tayong four laws na higit akong nasasagi nitong scenario na to. First is the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act or the Non-Consensual Sharing or Copying of the Nude Photo. Yung pangalawa ay grave threat. Yung threatening to post the photo online uh, for this person to have sex with you. Yung third is rape in the event that something happens. Um, physically, no, na pumayag siya because she was intimidated into doing it. Yung fourth ay the Anti-Cybercrime Prevention Act if uh, itong sex was done online. So, mali pa rin siya. So, ano ba yung mga, um, ito na yung mga four available remedies, no? charges na available dun sa survivor. But ano ba yung mga usual considerations in cases that uh, we've seen no, like this? I mean, san, kadala, actually, I, I've seen a case like this. I, kaya I wanted to clarify no, na in the event na pumayag, for example, para lang ma-prevent yung posting ng photo online, it's still considered rape. Because in that particular instance, um, the girl was actually intimidated into doing it. So, yon. Um, I needed to clarify that. Tapos ano ba yung mga other considerations? Mga services also. Um, first thing that we ask also, um, yung survivor, pag tinatanong kami ng ganito for um, legal advice, aside from the remedies, ano yung remedies outside of the law? Services that you can avail of. Importante, number one, if we go through any any experience similar to this, ay yung psychosocial na services, no? um, psychological first aid. Uh, this is a very traumatic and um, heavy experience na talagang mahirap pagdaanan na any survivor. So it's important that you couple any legal service or any legal remedy with other services, psychosocial services available. So maraming mga nag-offer nito. Um, one partner that we had recently was Luna's Collective. Uh, they offer psychological first aid or yung carry in UP Diliman. You also have social workers who uh, offer this kind of help, no? And also yung mga public hospitals, they have available psychologists. Pwede rin tayo lumapit sa kanila. One other concern that survivors have is, e na share na, mukhang nasa-circulate na yung picture ko online. What do we do about it? Um... Ito mahirap talaga. Um, that's why ang hirap pagka cyber, may cyber aspect na siya, yung crime. Totoo yung sinabi mo kanina eh, hindi siya pareho. Uh, yung, of course, it's still harassment, but practically and logistically, it's more difficult to deal with cyber crimes than yung mga physical crimes. Kasi ang, ang lawak na eh, we, sobrang, there's so many things you can do with the uh, yung use of ICT information communications technology so yun yung concern paano ko nagse-circulate na online what can you do um number one remedy that we can suggest no you can always um refer the survivor or yung survivor can always go to yung PNP or NBI they they have cyber crime division groups that can help track uh, especially dito unidentified person din natin kilala they can help you track Uh, kung sino ba ito nagpapakalat, sino bang nangitithreaten, ganyan, if wala tayong identity. Ano pa ang mga pwede? Um, si Tina uh, and I were talking about this um, the last time. no There are also, um, yung mga social media platforms are starting to come together to create tools uh, for survivors to be able to use in case na merong NCII na kumakalat. Yung isa dyan ay yung na-launch ng Facebook or Meta recently, yung um, stopncii.org. Uh, that tool can be used no, uh, to track yung uh, photos na kumalat dun sa platforms nila. For example, like Meta, IG, WhatsApp, yung mga hawak ng Meta na mga social media platforms. Pwedeng matrack yung picture and then the social media platform, um, the company will take it down. And then it will prevent yung further spreading or sharing of uh, the photo online. So, ano yung mga ano, confidentiality considerations? Ibig sabihin, I need to upload my photo dun sa stopncii.org or dun sa tool to be able to take it down. Um, we've clarified this. The tool does not uh, collect data or does not store copies of the images or the photos. It creates a special hash 
uh, for the photo no para ma-track niya across its platforms and then to take it down and then to prevent the uploading yung downside lang nito is that not all social media um, companies or platforms already have this but this is a good start no it's a good model to have so that's one tool also so yon for this particular case those are your legal remedies yun din yung mga pwedeng explore for psychosocial services and then yung mga extrajudicial or out of court na mga remedies na kailangan natin for example to help the survivor take down the photo or to track kung sino man yung gumagawa nito Thank you so much, Attorney Alex. I'm just taking a lot of notes and so far na settle talaga yung ano nga ba yung parang um, legal environment around dealing cases like this. So we have like up to four um, parang legal remedies. You also had um, ayun, yung outside of the law. So you have um, siguro ay lumapit din sa mga organizations who respond to this um, mga psychoso- na nag-offer ng psychosocial interventions, for example, and even for social media. And it's uh, ang interesting po na na-mention niya din yung about sa confidentiality of this because like, um, I think it looks like a really interesting and important information kasi may mga, I think may mga fear din na parang i-report ko nga uh, yung case ko pero kailan ko rin i-upload the very photo na I want taken down. Mm-hmm. So, ayun, um, yun, merong, merong general background din on what we can do. Pero uh, ask ko lang before we siguro head on to the next um, case lang din, Attorney Alex, if, if um, plano ko po halimbawa ko uh, mag-pursue na no, ng legal action, what, what do I need to have Mm-mm. pag uh, ganito? Sige. Um, well, uh, siguro explain ko muna yung, yung steps, yung process on how to file a complaint. Uh, first is, of course, you need the narration. Yung narration ng survivor, and then you need to turn it into a complaint. Uh, minsan naman, especially if you go to directly to the PNP or the NBI, they can help you do this. Yung pagkuha ng salaysay uh, ng mga complainant, nagagawa nila yan. Or outside of the PNP or NBI, you can always go to any lawyer who can assist you in drafting a complaint. Now, ano yung mga kailangan nilalaman ng complaint? Basically, it's just a narration of uh, what happened, ano yung ano nangyari, kailan, ano yung offense na na-commit against me. Kahit hindi yung legal definition na someone committed a violation of this particular act, hindi kailangan ng ganon. Kailangan lang ng particulars na ito, like how this case was presented, na on this day ganito, tapos hininga niya ako ng nude photo, and then tinrete niya ako, ganyan. Pwedeng ganun lang, ka-plain. Ka and direct to the point, na narration, that can all already be considered as a complaint. And then we file it with the Office of the City Prosecutor. Common questions that we have, what kind of evidence do we need to file? Um, mm-hmm. Ito, important, uh, yung resibo talaga. Uh, if uh, maka-encounter tayo ng cases na ganito, uh, we really need, um, if may makunan kayo na screenshots, ganyan, although ito, ano, uh, sensitive topic because potentially you'll be taking screenshots of um, an NCII. Uh, it doesn't have to include that. Pwedeng yung mga surrounding circumstances, for example, screenshot of the conversation, bearing the threat, uh, mga ganon, or any other thing, mga videos that you have, pictures. Um, if walang ganon, um, it would really help, ha? But if walang ganon, wala tayong nakuha screenshot, wala tayong record, uh, hindi natin kailangan mag-alala because in most cases, yung narration the the sole narration of the survivor is enough to file a case and then most of the time it's enough to even convict in a trial so basta yung judges naman are trained eh, uh, to check if yung testimony ng witness ng complainant is truthful uh, it's candid ganyan na nagsasabi siya ng totoo nakikita nila yon so minsan kahit wala tayong mga written proof or evidence na matinatawag natin that's fine but it will greatly help no, if we have these. So kung meron tayong mga suspected cases, it's important that we take screenshots or we get records of it. Wag lang siguro yung material itself, yung photos, um, kasi pwedeng unlawful eh, yung possession of that photo. Kasi di ba nabangit mo nga kanina, eh, yung mere copying or reproduction is um, prohibited. But you can always, ano, um, you can always, take screenshots again of yung mga surrounding na uh, conversations, mga posts, captions, and so on. Alright, okay. 
Thank you so much po sa pag-shed light on that. All right. So ayun. Um medyo ano na din yung details about it. At at least we have parang steps na on on what we can do, no. So yun for the Thank you for shedding light on the dito pa lang sa first case. So I will I'll head on to the next one na. So this one naman is another report, no. So it reads here. So ayun. One day, the PNP received information from the USA Federal Bureau of Investigation, so FBI, that an uh, that an American national uh, that they arrest oh Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So FBI nag-arrest sila ng American National on suspicion of facilitating quote-unquote cyber sex crimes involving minors and has a possible cohort based in the Philippines. So upon investigation, they traced the online child sexual exploitation materials or CSEM to a household in Bagong Silang, Manila, headed by a 39-year-old woman. The police rescued two girls, so both are minors, and were taken to a designated shelter to undergo necessary trauma-informed care for child survivors. So this one, Attorney Alex, you can go ahead and share your insights po about this one. Mm -hmm. um, for this one, I think it's ano, very straightforward. Uh, yung possible dyan, uh, nakikita ko um, dalawa. Yung first is yung child prostitution or trafficking under the Anti-Child Abuse Act. Uh, yung second is uh, wedding rape. Uh, well, let's go into the first one first. Yung sa una, yung child prostitution or trafficking, it's very explicit naman, no? Any, um, yung any act of, uh, for example, recruiting uh, children or holding them in an area, in a house, uh, for sexual, yung, yung prostitution purposes, yung child prostitution that's punishable under the law. Um, and yan, punishable up to 40 years imprisonment uh, pwede. Or child trafficking, for example, yung pagbebenta ng mga bata or forcing someone to bear children para meron silang matatraffic, ganyan, for purposes of, ayan, child prostitution, it's punishable. Um, yung second na nabanggit ko, um, ito pala, yung sa uh, child prostitution or child trafficking, marami dyan ha, na covered acts. It's not just possibly itong 39-year-old woman uh, that's uh, liable for it. Pwede rin yung mga any one who, who is advertising um, itong child uh, for, for that purpose. Yung mga, um, nag, yung mga peddlers, ganyan. Uh, they're also liable under the act. Yung second na nakikita ko is um, rape. It's still in relation to the Anti-Child Abuse Act and kaya nga child prostitution. No? We assume that there's um, sexual activities involved. Uh, yung rape, um, notably, di ba recently the, the law was passed increasing the age of sexual consent to 16. Uh, so yung sa ano naman, rape, again, any form of ano sexual, yan, sexual nabanggit ko na kanina, ano yung mga rape? Ano, what can be considered as rape? But the notable thing is in relation to this particular case, if it's against a minor, it will be um, in relation to the Anti-Child Abuse Act. And then may additional tayo na if, if this is committed against any child under the age of 16, automatic siya statutory rape. What does that mean? When we say statutory rape, it means we do not even have to prove consent or, not, or lack of consent in, a, in trial. Basta age of 16, under age of 16 rather, ay diretso na to. Automatic ay walang consent yan. Kahit ano yung nangyari, kahit pumayag siya, sumama siya, hindi yan consent. Ano na yan, rape siya agad. So pwede itong dalawang to, yung, yung covered nito. And then um, notably, ha, under the Anti-Child Abuse Act, um, ano yung, may mga indicators kasi placed by the law para ma-check natin kung May persons ba attempting to commit child trafficking or child prostitution? Under the law, even yung act of, uh, for example, merong adult na hindi relative ng bata that is found alone in a secluded area, for example, in a room, an inn, a hotel, um, that can be considered as an attempt um, to commit child prostitution or child trafficking. Or, if merong mga bata employed in yung mga service um yung mga service sectors like for example bathhouse um massage parlor yung mga ganito pag may mga batang involved 
um, may meron din yon. The, the law presumes that there is an attempt to commit child prostitution or child trafficking. So may mga remedies na yan agad. It, ibig sabihin na cover siya agad under the Anti-Child Abuse Act. And then one good thing about this law is that in, in most crimes kasi, it's the survivor that needs to file the complaint herself or himself. But in this case, any um, maraming mga pinapayagan yung batas na mga tao na ma- para magsampan ng kaso, hindi lang yung bata, pwedeng yung magulang, pwedeng DSWD worker, social worker, pwedeng um, yung barangay, barangay uh, captain, pwede nga kahit three concerned and responsible citizens in the area kung saan nangyari yung krimen. And- So pagka may nakikita tayo na ganito, that's why it's very important that we stay vigilant. Kasi we have actually have the power to file complaints um, for um, mga possible na survivors of um, this crime. So for example, may man nakikita tayo na ganon. Yung nabanggit ko kanina, di ba? The law presumes na kung may nakita tayo na parang wait lang, hindi na ka mag-anak yun, may kasama siyang bata in a secluded area, uh, we can already file a complaint. Uh, three persons. Kahit hindi natin kilala yung bata, unrelated tayo dun sa bata, hindi tayo magulang, hindi tayo relative, we can file the complaint. So we need to stay vigilant kasi the law gives us that power to protect children even if we don't know them. We just need to look out for yung mga ganong signs. And then, yan, yung mga, um, after, ito yung options natin, no, under the law, yung mga remedies. Um, and then, maganda yung Anti-Child Abuse Act because Uh, marami mga other provisional remedies afforded dun sa survivor. Isa yan, yung mga trauma-informed um, care, uh, pwedeng uh, yung custody ng bata ay binibigay mo na sa DSWD, uh, DSWD. Um, confidentiality, uh, dun sa paghandle ng case mismo from the filing of the complaint up until trial ay nire-redact yan yung pangalan ng bata. Um, pagka nagtatrial ay closed room yan, hindi pwede ang media or anyone. And one one more notable provision pala ha, under the Anti-Child Abuse Act is that uh, yung media, if there are any reporters or publishers, mga writers, writing on this, to, na sensationalize yung case, meron silang nalabas na information dun sa bata, precisely because we're trying to protect nga, diba, the privacy of the child, If ma-violate nila yon in any way, that's unlawful under the act that can be punishable. So ito yung mga remedies afforded dun sa survivors in this case. Thank you so much, um, Attorney Alex. Sorry, I just have a clarification. Um, You mentioned kanina na concerned citizens can also com- mm-hmm. file a complaint. Sa so city prosecutor din po ba ito? Like the ones before or where can they go po? Yes. Um, All complaints uh, are filed with the Office of the City Prosecutor. Um, lalo na yung mga grave. Uh, meron tayong two-for-one rule dyan eh. Um, I won't go into that. Pero what I can say is, yung mga malalaki yung matataas yung mga penalty, uh, it needs to be filed. All complaints need to be filed with the Office of the City Prosecutor. First, kasi magpapreliminary investigation muna sila, meaning they filter complaints. Uh, the fiscal or the prosecutor, um, they need to see first if may probable cause. Uh, to elevate this complaint to the court. Um, pag wala, mukhang gawa-gawa yung complaint. Um, but again, very rare instances yun. No? Uh, but in that event, let's say, na gawa-gawa, uh, mukhang walang probable cause, mukhang hindi nangyari, nagde-dismiss yung fiscal para hindi na maklog yung uh, courts ng mga kaso. So all complaints will go through the OCP, the Office of the City Prosecutor. Even if you go to the police, yung Women's and Children's Desk, tapos nag-file ka ng complaint doon, yung police, fina-forward din yan sa OCP. It's the OCP that conducts, again, the investigation before um, an actual criminal case is filed with the court. All right, Thank you so much. So, ayun. So, kanina na na-share kasi yung about how, what, what we can do if kami yung victim survivor and then we also go into... It. basically yung role din ng community no as a concerned citizen we also have um in a way a role on 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 those uh grounds so ayun we have how to file a complaint kanina na mention and then now yung process no of what uh even the office of the city 
prosecutor does sa mga ganitong kaso. So, ayun, thank you so much. Um, uh, I would just like to remind then everyone who's here, again, good evening and thank you. Um, if you have any questions, we will have a Q&A portion po mamaya. So, please do um, ask away sa chat box po. Um, or maybe later you can also ask na mismo na naka uh, mic on. So ayun, I just want to remind everyone. So we will now move on no, to the next case. So I will read um, another report that we also uh, mapped. So yan, ito naman. Um, so yung title niya no, is Actress Kinilabutan, Peking Sex Video Ginamita ng Geek Tech Technology. No? So I'll, I'll just go through this one. So the third case reads, um, an actress saw a deep fake sex video of her after a fan tagged her on Twitter about it. So the actress denied that she was the one on the video and immediately reported it to her family and um, yung management niya. So nag-release din ng statement yung management niya at ito yung banggit nila, the public is warned not to post, share, or otherwise circulate the video. We will not hesitate to take uh, appropriate legal action against any person circulating uh, the materials. And we intend to hold these individuals liable for the damage they caused. We remind the public to be more discerning of the content they see online and to help us take down this voyeuristic and defamatory content. Rest assured that we are taking all necessary steps to hold the individuals involved accountable and we are coordinating with the proper ag government agencies to remove this content. So ayun. Um, sige, um, Attorney Alex, you can go ahead for this one. I'm not sure if this is more complicated or easier by ito sa eyes of the law. No. <laughs> This is actually, ano, um, ito yung out of the five cases. No? This is my favorite. Kasi uh, this is the most complicated, I think. Um, I say most complicated only because uh, ito, I don't think, um, I've, I have never seen personally a Supreme Court case on this. Uh, pakaramdam ko kasi very new, relatively new, no? ang deepfake technology. And yung laws natin crafted um, to combat digital voyeurism and any form of it ay napasa nung time na hindi pa ganun kasikat ang uh, social media. So we've seen very few cases of this na merong na hindi ikaw yung talaga yon pero ginamit lang yung uh, mukha mo to make it seem like you. So I have my legal conclusions about this kung yung mga possible uh, cases that we can file. I'll share it. Um, yung first is... Uh, Still, um, a violation of the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. I would argue this because, um, again, nab nabanggit natin kanina, what the law, that law tries to prevent no, is yung taking, uh, non-consensual taking of a photo or video of a private part or sexual activity of any person and the non-consensual sharing, reproduction, copying of uh, the photo or video. Um Meron kasing, I think the intent then talaga is to protect the privacy of a person. So kahit na sabi natin hindi talaga ikaw yon, hindi mo katawan yon, pero mukha mo kasi yon eh. Tapos uh, sinishare siya as you. Uh, I think that's still a violation of the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. Because it doesn't matter no if um, merong if your real privacy or yung real privacy mo to your body and your sexual activities, if it's the one, that one being protected or in the eyes of alam mo, other people or viewers lang, that's you. I don't think um, merong substantial difference between the two because it's being connected to you. Alam mo, mukha mo yun. So um, it doesn't matter. So I think it's still a violation of the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. What other things uh, can we file? Um, pwedeng libel, cyber libel, but I think um, I'm saying this in the context na it's being shared online. So pwedeng ano kasi, di ba, yung usual instances nito, lalo na pag celebrity, pag sinishare yan ay, oy, panoori mo tong video ni ganito. Ano, nakita ko siya ganyan. Tapos, ayan, share mo yan. So cyber libel, um, Kasi there's already a, a written caption, no? Kasi cyber libel, um, ano yan eh, any statement, there needs to be a statement, whether it's oral or a written, ganyan. So yung sharing of video, kung video at video lang, medyo ano siya, um, malabo. 
Pero kung the manner of sharing, no, it can be covered by yung cyber libel. But if it's sharing of the video alone, that's anti-photo and video voyeurism. And then you also have yung recent na Safe Spaces Act natin. Um, and then Anti-Cyber Crime Prevention Act no, for identity theft. Because um, your photos online, that's how they use the ba? Deep fake technology. They get photos of you ng different angles and then they get videos also. And then they create parang an AI version. Tapos ina-edit nila, nilalagay nila doon. So, pwedeng ganun siya, identity theft or um, non-consensual use of your photos or videos online. That's a violation of the Safe Spaces Act or the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. So again, ito yung mga options natin. Violation of um, anti-photo and video voyeurism, um, libel, cyber libel, uh, Safe Spaces Act, or the Anti-Cyber Crime Prevention Act. You can also file, ito pala, not, um, I've been saying yung mga options nyo for criminal cases. But we also have a civil case um, option. What is a civil case option? Uh, kasi usually, in any instance, no, we have three possible remedies. Um, not all are available, but ayan nga, three possible remedies. You have your criminal case, your civil case, or your administrative case. Yung criminal, yan yung kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan. Yung mga punishable by imprisonment, you file with the prosecutor. Yung administrative, um, what do you call this? Yung administrative case, uh, yan yung, for example, institution, like pwedeng sa workplace or sa school, yung mga administrative complaint lang na usually parang ano lang din, um, na administrative bodies yung nakakapag-implement of whatever penalty and then very informal hearing, yung mga ganyan. Uh, civil uh, case, it's more of a private uh, option in that usually ang nakukuha kasi dito is uh, monetary compensation. Hindi dahil na memera ang survivors, no? but there are real um, consequences that require um, monetary compensation. Uh, even when criminal, when you file a criminal case, it's the, yung civil aspect is deemed instituted with a criminal. So, pag nakikita kayo, hindi lang conviction, pag naglabas ng court order convicting, hindi lang yon yung part ng order. Meron din dyan that the accused is directed to pay 500,000 in damage, actual damages to whoever. And 500,000 as para exemplary da moral damages, mga ganyan. So, civil aspect yon. You can also file a civil case without a criminal case. That's what I'm saying. Na pwede kang, for example, dahil kasi celebrity to eh, I would assume merong uh, reputation uh, that's uh, besmirched, no? Um, tapos na try yun i-compensate through monetary means. Uh, that's also a very real option for survivors. So pwede kayo mag-file ng complaint for damages uh, with the court also. But this time, hindi yan, uh, hindi yan dadaan sa OCT. You file it directly with the court since civil case lang siya. Um, I think merong... Uh, sorry, nakita ko lang, no? There's a question if uh, the Data Privacy Act can also apply. Uh, Yes, um, but these are I'm there's a reason why I'm recommending itong mga remedies. Um, more more because ang hinahabol ko dito ay uh, yung pinaka grave and commensurate punishment no for the crime. Kasi even the safe spaces, I would recommend it as a medyo uh, third option ganyan. Unahin natin yung mga una kasi merong mga laws na mas swak talaga dun sa crime, and mas commensurate yung penalties under the law. Um, so yung safe spaces, for example, it's a very good law in that it addresses many forms of harassment or violence that weren't addressed before. But um, I would say one thing about it is that medyo mas mababa ang penalties under that law as opposed to other laws. For example, like sabi natin, atay photo and video voyeurism, or yun, Anti-Child Abuse Act, yung mga ganito. So, minsan, pagdating dun sa pag ng options natin, isa rin to dun sa mga things that we discuss with clients na um, baka mas gusto natin tong option na to because it directly, um, it directly addresses and at the same time, uh, mas mataas yung penalty. And pagkaganon kasi, di ba, baka yung deterring factor din ay mas malakas din. 
uh, for future uh, cases also. Ayan. All right, sige po. Thank you for shedding light. There are also other questions, but we can do that na din later on sa Q&A, no? Kasi we're also, I think, in the fourth case na. So, we'll, uh, we'll kind of um finish na around this. But it's good to know. Um, kasi ngayon, um, nakita ko na involved na, for example, yung cyber libel and even identity theft. Um, pag mga deepfake na videos, um, uh, I think napaka-importante nung principle na nabanggit nyo kanina to ni Alex na um, sinishare siya as you. So parang important talaga yun na detail na na-capture when we think about digital voyeurism. Especially dito kasi din deep fake na siya. So even us, medyo nakakawin din din yung cases na parang grabe din na ginagamitan yung supposedly technology na for advancement and yet um, it's here being used for uh, to perpetrate violence kasi Ayun. Um, and then na-mention nyo na kanina na um, this happens to celebrities. Actually, yes. Parang we have mapped a um, couple of cases na um, women celebrities din talaga yung parang dito namin nakita yung pag-surface nitong paggagamit ng deepfake to ano. Ayun. Uh, pag-perpetuate. So, ayun. Thanks for that. Um, ayun. Um, so, so far we have those. And then you also brought up yung possibility. I mean, yeah. About the admin and civil case aside from the criminal um a way of of legal remedy so there's one i will um thank you then by the way for her answering the the uh, initial questions and then my questions as well as we go i will move on now to the next um case so ito um the title is ph indian now for new fix blackmail so ito siya um, a foreign national met two ladies, so magkapatid sila, aged 18 and 14 years old on Facebook. The suspect and the elder victim soon entered into a relationship. The suspect asked for her nude photos and when the victim declined, he came up with edited purported naked pictures of the 18-year-old, which he threatened to post on social media if she did not give him a real nude photo of hers. So the suspect reportedly threatened to kill yung kapatid ng um, victim survivor if she will not give in to his demand. So ito, um, we included this one kasi we are not sure if nag, how big of a factor ba yung pag foreigner yung perpetrator or dito parang yung sense of parang transnational na yung case or what. So yeah, go ahead attorney Alex, what can you uh, share about this one po? Okay. Um, ito, sige, doon muna tayo sa what laws are available, no? Ano yung mga nasasagi niya? Uh, dalawa yung nakita ko dito. Number one is uh, yung BAUSI, Anti-Violence Against Women and Children Act. Uh, pangalawa, mamaya, babalik tayo dun sa grave threats. Um, yun, doon muna tayo sa BAUSI. Ano muna siya? Uh, nabanggit ko siya kasi yung BAUSI comes into play. Um, dalawa yan, eh. If uh, if merong relationship, uh, for example, may perpetrator, may survivor, if itong dalawang tao na to, they have a sexual or dating relationship uh, that's covered by the VAUSI, Anti-VAUSI Act. Yung second element is if the perpetrator commits any form of abuse, any of the four abuses under the law, Anti-VAUSI Act, no, against the survivor. Ano tong four kinds of abuses na to? Um, there's the sexual abuse, Ano may examples niyan? Um, rape, uh, yung sexual assault, kanya na banggit ko, any form of, yung mga acts of lasciviousness, yung mga uh, forcing your partner to uh, engage in pornography or masturbation, whatever, sexual abuse. Um, second form of abuse is psychological. So pwedeng intimidation, um, any form of uh, psychological abuse, Yung mga uh, intimidating, threatening, mga ganyan, uh, kasama yan dyan. Uh, yung pangatlo ay economic uh, abuse. Yung economic ay, ito I think ang lesser known form of abuse under the anti bausi Act. No? Ito yung, for example, uh, pagka hinohostage ng partner mo yung pera mo, uh, hinohostage na yung uh, sweldo mo, ganyan, kailangan isurrender mo sa kanya, siya magde-decide kung ano yung mga pwede mong pag mga ganyan. Uh, uh, kailangan may consent niya if you wanna engage in a in a in a parang an activity that um, 
produces profit, yung mga ganyan. Uh, that's uh, economic abuse. Yung fourth kind of abuse is physical. Um, I think merong uh, case no today na lumabas uh, regarding this, yung mga pambubugbog. Um, yan, yung mga any infliction of physical harm, pasok yan dyan. So those are the four kinds of abuse. Now, again, balik ako, i-clarify ko lang, if a person commits any of those four forms of abuses under the anti vowsi Act, that is covered but only if the perpetrator is in a dating or sexual relationship with the survivor. So, for example, if nag-commit ka ng physical abuse against a woman na hindi, uh, hindi mo naman uh, karelasyon, ay kaibigan mo lang or kapitbahay mo, hindi yan anti vowsi act, uh, that's, but that's still considered as serious physical injuries, for example, under the law. So, hindi lang siya papasok doon, but it doesn't mean that it's not unlawful. Ngayon, nabanggit ko to because uh, the problem states no, that they entered into a relationship. Now, that, that fact in itself, that's a go signal for the application of the anti vowsi Act. And then subsequently, nag-commit siya ng form of abuse, yung pag-i-intimidate, no? pag-threaten dun sa partner niya na bigyan mo ka ng nude photos kundi sasaktan ko yung kapatid mo that can be considered as psychological abuse, potentially sexual abuse, no? Um, that's considered also. So that's anti vowsi Act. Yung second na nabanggit ko, we've talked about this earlier, yung grave threats. It's a uh, uh, threatening to commit um, an act that is unlawful against a person to force this person to do some other thing for you. So dito, in that case, that's forcing the 18-year-old no, to send a nude photo. Um, otherwise, papatayin yung mas bata niyang kapatid. That's grave threats. So that's punishable also. Now, you're going to into your question na, uh, how is this treated uh, since foreign national? Our criminal laws are um, jur uh, yung jurisdictional ang venue. What do I mean by that? Meaning, if you commit it in Philippine jurisdiction, meaning in our country, or yung mga spaces considered as Philippine jurisdiction, kunyari sa ibang bansa, pero nasa embassy ka, nasa consular office ka, or nasa uh, Philippine ship ka, ganyan. Uh, that's considered Philippine jurisdiction. If you commit any crime, any form of crime, dun sa jurisdiction ng Philippines, regardless of your nationality, you will be covered by our criminal laws. So itong si foreign national uh, will still be covered by our criminal laws, meaning he will have to be tried here in the Philippines. Um, if na com ang committed violation against our laws, he will have to be held liable for it. Minsan meron lang parang playing into factors na mga convention, ganyan, or mga political na eh, in a sense, na relationship with ganyan. Tapos di requested that parang marami tayong ganyan, di ba, mga against US nationals, that they requested that this person be detained uh, with the US or trial be uh, conducted there, mga ganyan. Those are political things na. But the thing, uh, yung what stands is, or at least yung general rule is, if they commit it here, regardless of nationality, they will be covered. I see. Thank you so much for that. Um, actually, Ms. Lisa also raised the same question then, no, if the case is transboundary in nature now. So how can the victim survivor now go after the perpetrator of violence? So I guess it applies then the same process that you have to have a documentation, you have to um, report to the city prosecutor. Um, yes. And then they can help investigate kung paano matatrack yung ano, perpetrator po. Well, um, if nandito siya, you need to file agad. So mm -hmm. it's uh, pupunta again ano siya, with the Office of the City Prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Once na makarating to dun sa court, mag-issue ng warrant of arrest. Mm -hmm. And then kailangan i-kulong i or hulihin tong foreign national. And then... Usually, if uh, not if bailable offense siya, this foreign national will be allowed to post bail. So, magbabayad siya for provisional liberty. Pero merong, uh, may ano yun, tawag dito, meron siyang, may requirements or merong qualification ang kanyang provisional liberty. No? Merong mga requirements yung korte, 
na pwedeng kailangan ganyan dito ka lang. Pwede kang uh, hindi na pwede kang wala sa kulungan pero hindi ka pwedeng umalis dito ka lang. Pag pinatawag ka ng korte kailangan mo magpakita otherwise marerevoke yung bail mo tapos ikukulong ka. Tapos doon ka habang magta-trial. Yung mga nakikita kong cases doon sa against foreign nationals if it's bailable ha. May mga ganyang conditions eh, that they can't leave the Philippines. If they want to leave the Philippines, they have to apply for a motion for authority to travel. And minsan, dinedenay siya ng court, lalo na pag foreign national, kasi sinasabi ng court ay flight risk. Mm-hmm. Meaning, lalo na kung wala silang tie sa Philippines, napadaan lang sila dito. Na parang kung wala silang tirahan dito, hindi naman sila foreign national pa, parang inisip ng court, what are the chances, no? If I allow this person to travel, eh baka hindi na yung bumalik dito. Then it mm-hmm. becomes more complicated. Because if this person gets to another country, mas mahirap siyang habulin doon. Uh, ano talaga? Practically speaking, it's very, very difficult. And sometimes other countries do not cooperate with us, meaning they do not help us track this person. So the remedy really is to keep this person here. Um, kaya important na if, it's, uh, if a foreign national um, commits the crime, kailangan mahuli siya agad. And then, um, ma-issuean siya agad ng warrant of arrest para at least applicable agad if this person posts bail, ay applicable agad yung restrictions ng court. Okay. Um, I, I just have a clarification then. So, halimbawa, for, um, so yung na-share nyo kanina din is about if it's committed in Philippine jurisdiction. But how about like if ako yung victim survivor, I'm a Filipina here in the Philippines, but yung perpetrator is abroad. May anything ba around that? Um, again, if as long as the crime, we'll have to delineate, ha? If mm-hmm. the crime is committed in Philippine jurisdiction, it is covered by our criminal laws. But if the crime is committed there, na kung nasaan man si foreign national, then hindi natin hawak yon. Um, does that answer question? Or I think ang mas tanong ay, what if may crime na committed here, um, covered by our criminal laws, tapos nandun sa ibang bansa. Mm-hmm. Yes. That becomes more complicated. Um, mm-hmm. Kaya ang hirap nung, for example, yung mga, ano nakikita natin ng ganito, um, mga cyber sex dens. Minsan ang operators right. ay outside of Philippine jurisdiction, uh, but they pedal here. Uh, mm-hmm. That becomes difficult. Ang immediate remedy is still to file the complaint and then a warrant of arrest will be issued, meaning, pagka nag-attempt itong person na to to come into Philippine jurisdiction, mm-hmm. ay huhulihin na siya agad. Paglapag niyan sa airport, huhulihin niyan agad. So yung mga ganon. Um, mahirap lang talaga yung implementation aspect nun if um, talagang out of reach talaga siya, meaning right. wala siya sa Pilipinas, wala siyang balak bumisita dito, or sa any place covered by our jurisdiction, then that becomes really more complicated. But at least the warrant of arrest is standing. And then yung implementation, if we want to cooperate with other states so for them to help us track or for them to help us arrest, ganyan, matter of ano na yan, political affairs. Mm-hmm. All right. Oo nga. So it really, for this one, meron talagang, may elements talaga of na need around international cooperation. Um, and nabanggit nyo kanina of, of having to track and then Um, I feel like it it also plays into sa yung, yung, yung sa mga entrapment operation. Medyo nakikita namin to usually yun yung parang um, action din na ginagawa ng law enforcement to track the perpetrator. Mm-hmm. Um, makes sense kasi yung mga, may mga ilang report din kami na napamap na um, yung mga cases, for example, ng OSAIC, it's not really from, for example, like sa barangay uh, na nagre-report sa sa ano sa law enforcement but more of tips siya from abroad na meron kaming sus, uh, suspect din na ganito na nangyayari diyan so parang mga ganun so kind of at least dito parang mas na-shed light yan gaano rin ka complicated as you said kanina yung mga ganitong kaso so ayun um I'll head on now to our last case actually and then we'll proceed to the question and answer so um again please do ask questions you can chat it sa box meron na po kami nakita kanina we will go through it um I will now read yung last case natin no um so this one is the case of Grace so is it po itong article sa PCIJ, no? So, ito naman, um, Grace is a high school student and she received information that nude images of her were circulating in the school. 
image, the images and videos were taken when she was 16 and was dating a senior in her school. He was 18. He asked for her naked photos at first. She obliged but didn't want to include her face. He insisted. When they started having sex, he persuaded her to film the act too. She remembered agreeing in one instance, but another video she was, show, she was shown came as a surprise. I had no idea na he took a video of me, sabi niya. So when they got a word about my, my scandal, they didn't treat me the same anymore, she said about school officials. Grace received messages from many strangers. Some continued to harass long after her videos were first uploaded. So yes, uh, Attorney Alex, you can go ahead and share your insights then about this one. Um, sige. Uh, yung mga immediate loss, no? Uh, first is yung, of course, anti-photo and medium voyeurism act. Uh, we've discussed this uh, since kanina, uh, since may non-consensual na sharing of uh, the photo, kahit na shinare niya uh, initially, no? Dun sa boyfriend. So again, with consent yung taking of the photo, but non-consensual yung sharing, that's still a violation. And then meron pa dito na... Uh, sure, consensual yung ibang taking of the video pero may isa na hindi niya maalala na mukhang hindi, hindi siya nag-consent doon. So that's violation of uh, anti-photo and video voyeurism. Next is anti-child pornography. Uh, since uh, 16, no? so minor, under age of 18, she is still covered by the Anti-Child um, Abuse Act or the Anti-Child Pornography Act. Uh, since this is um, material na with sexual cons- uh, sexual uh, subject or yung sexual yung nature nung, nung material, uh, that can be considered as a form of child pornography that's that's completely prohibited. Actually, um, later I'll go to that no na how this makes um, yung what do you call this. Uh, yung institution ng crime more or yung filing ng complaint easier pagka child pornography yung subject involved we'll go to that later but again that that can be covered um yung next is uh, possible uh, although sabi kasi dito is 16 but ito lang ay sabihin ko lang if it's under 16 ha nabanggit na natin to kanina since the age of sexual consent was increased to 16 meaning if a, if a person under the age of 16 um, has sexual intercourse with another person, that can be considered rape, whether it's non-consensual or, or consensual. Because, again, the law presumes that you cannot give sexual consent if you're under the age of 16. So, statutory rape siya agad. So, ito, um, baka lang. Pero sabi kasi dito sa problem is uh, 16 na siya. So, baka hindi siya covered dun sa statutory rape. But again, just in case may under 16. So, we know what it is. Um, yung next is uh, yung sa Safe Spaces Act. Uh, pwede rin yun. Uh, specific to yung sending messages, ganyan, na sexual in nature, or yung mga pambabastos, ganyan, pang-aalok, or whatever, mga sexual comments, ganyan, made online, that's covered by uh, yung online uh, gender-based sexual harassment under the Safe Spaces Act. And then, um, I think meron kasing factor dito na mukhang merong may administrative aspect. I say this because mukhang pinag ng school, no? Uh, ito, I think, ano rin, option na for the survivor to go to make an administrative case against yung mga teachers, ganyan, na possibly employing discriminatory acts, ganyan yung mga officials. Kasi diba parang mukhang, ayan, again, mukhang pinag-iinitan na siya. That's also an option. Um, now, uh, going back dun sa sinabi ko, how does yung child pornography content uh, make um, yung institution of complaints easier? It's because, again, remember, um, in most cases, in most criminal acts, the one, the only person who can file a complaint is the survivor. Except, di ba, if in, in some cases na public or if it's committed against the child. So if it's child pornography or anti-child abuse act ang papasok, ito yung sabi natin kanina na any three persons, concerned citizens can file the complaint for this person. So, ibig sabihin, if mukhang 
sa picture pa lang circulating or video, nakita ko na, wait, mukhang bata, mukhang minor yung involved. I can already file with two other people. I can already file a complaint uh, for child pornography or Anti-Child Abuse Act. One also, one notable provision no, ng anti-child pornography is the person doesn't even have to be a minor. Meaning, if the picture or the video is being packaged na to make this person look like a minor, ibig sabihin, pwede siyang i-cover kasi that's still considered as child pornography. So kahit sabihin natin, mukhang 19 years old na yan, pero pinagmumuha siya deliberately na bata or yung packaging sa kanya dun sa photo or video ay bata, ano pa rin siya, still considered as child pornography. And actually, mas may nipin yung batas na to because yung ano talaga, yung possession, uh, kahit mapadaan lang, makita sa phone mo na parang nag-access ka ng link ganyan, containing child pornography that's already punishable. So we need to be very careful. Kaya nasabi ko kanina, if you want to get receipts, ganyan, screenshots, Ingat lang kayo sa sinescreenshot nyo. You can't store photos or videos of anything, uh, yung mga subject photos or videos. Hindi pwede kasi pwede rin kayo makasuhan ng possession of child pornography. So, doon lang tayo sa surrounding circumstances. So, again, options. Violation of Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act. Um, violation of Anti-Child Pornography um, or Anti-Child Abuse Act. Um, pwedeng rape, statutory rape if this girl is under the age of 16. Um, pwedeng administrative complaint against uh, the school officials uh, kasi discriminatory yung act, no? Pwede rin yung civil. Um, pwedeng violation of the Safe Spaces Act. Yan. Ayun. Thank you so much. So, ayun. Um, ngayon, ngayon ko lang nalaman na even yung, yung packaging na na-mention nyo for uh, a material na making it look like the person there is a minor is actually punishable by law. So I think that's a very important thing to note as well. So yeah, um, actually that's our last case. So I will proceed now to the Q&A because no? we have some questions here. Um, and yeah, again, for anyone na gusto pang maglaro din, you feel free to chat lang din po, no? So, um, ayun, uh, Miss Emilia Lastica Ternura has a question. Sabi niya, pwede po ba kaming, um, hi, good evening, ma'am, uh, mag-file ng child abuse case on behalf of the complainant kung ang incident ay nangyari three years ago nung minor pa siya. Yes po. Um, ang ano naman, ang reckoning period natin is uh, when the incident or the crime happened. So, kasi di ba, ang pinapunish natin, for example, especially for the Anti-Child Abuse Act, was the act of abusing a child. So, ibig sabihin, kahit lumaki na yung bata, but still, that act stands eh, kasi nangyari siya eh, naambuso ng bata eh. So, kahit po lumaki na, kasi understandable eh, um, most survivors don't file right away. It takes them a few years to be able to file. So that will still be an option. It doesn't matter if hindi na siya minor. Basta as long as the act happened when this person was still a minor. Now, I'll just jump to ano, another usual na question po no, um, regarding this. Medyo nasagi niyo eh. Uh, yung three years ganyan. Ang usual question kasi ay, paano pagka ilang taon na ang nakalipas, pwede pa rin ba tayong magsampa ng kaso? Um, what I can say is different laws, different um, crimes have different prescriptive periods. Yung, in, yung ibig po yung sabihin natin sa prescriptive period, this is yung period nyo to be able to file a case, bali yung deadline niya. Hindi po yan agaran kasi yeah, that's the usual question of some of our clients, ganyan na, eh paano kung isang taon ay nakalipas, pwede pa ba ako mag-file or sunog na ba yung kaso? Not necessarily. Um, matagal usually ang prescriptive period eh. Um, minsan may mga 4 years, may 10 years, for rape it's 20 years. It depends on the penalty. Pag mas malaki yung penalty, mas mahaba yung prescriptive period um, and then vice versa. So hindi naman kailangan na uh, nangyari ngayon ay kailangan next week ma-file na natin. We usually have a few years naman. So, and ano rin, we added the assurance also to survivors. If you're not able to file because it's really difficult. Um, minsan, di ba, we encourage um, clients first na, eh, nabanggit ko kanina, maybe avail of psychosocial services first. 
uh, we need to address. That's the first concern, actually. Our first concern is address nyo muna yung trauma, possible trauma. Um, and then, e-gauge, we need a go signal from your psychologist or the psychosocial um, um, therapist, ganyan. We need a go signal na dun sa willingness and readiness, emotionally and psychologically, of the client to lodge a complaint. Uh, kasi minsan ay nauunahan eh, we jump the gun. Of course, we want to file a complaint agad. Uh, we want to correct um, injustice, ganyan. Pero minsan kasi may adverse effects to the um, complainant na hindi siya ready pa emotionally. So kailangan ano muna, uh, we ask them to take time first, ganyan, regroup muna. Minsan family, ganyan, kasi they want to involve the family. They need the support system. It really takes time and that's okay. Um, yung usual tip lang po namin ay nabangit po kanina, resibo kung kaya. Kasi ayun nga, na what if uh, ni pa ako ready ngayon, in three years I become ready then that will be helpful. But again, reassurance ko rin kanina, if we're not able to get um, evidence written or object evidence, no, that's fine. The, uh, narration will suffice, but it will greatly help, although not required. So, yun po, just uh, to answer your question. Ayan. Ah, you can unmute, unmute po. Sorry po. Follow up lang po sana. Kasi di ba recently lang na-approve yung uh, age ng consent at yes. 16. Um, will it be applicable even if um, the incident happened way before the approval of the law? Mm. Raising, no. uh, lowering, raising the age of consent. Mm -hmm. Most um, most laws po kasi are... Um, what do you call this? Uh, prescriptive ang application, um, meaning hindi nita ay pwede maging retroactive dun sa application ng batas. Um, kasi especially since may rights din yung accused, ang kasama po dun ay yung pag-apply ng laws na beneficial to the accused as much as possible, no? just to balance um, yung rights. Hindi ibig sabihin nito ay pinapalaya natin sila or we're letting them uh, get off easy. It's just that ayun eh, it would be unfair na to apply laws uh, to them retroactively na hindi pa naman nila alam na may ganun. But um, the thing is, even if we can't retroactively apply itong law, raising the age of sexual consent to 16, um, if it's really non-consensual, we can still file a case for a uh, rape. Um, ang natatanggal lang naman po doon ay yung ano eh, uh, what do you call this? yung added advantage of not having to prove uh, consent anymore or lack of consent. Kasi yung statutory rape po, di ba, automatic. Uh, basta under 12 ka or under 16, wala na tayong pakay kung nag-consent yan o hindi, ay diretso yan rape. It just um, removes that added um, ease no, pagdating sa trial of having to prove that, but we can still file a case naman for, for rape. Salamat po. Ayan. Thank you din po, Ms. Emilia, for raising the question. Ayun, um, additional knowledge on that as well. On the prescriptive period, yun pala, no? May ano din, may time period kung saan um, we have to be mindful that of, may, we have to be mindful rin of that. So, ayun. I'll, I'll move on to the next question. So, this one's from Ms. Alex and Valentin. Um, yung question po niya is, if aware na there was a video taken but was unable to verbally say na pumapayag sila. Is that also non-consensual? Um, yes. Uh, ano lang talaga? Uh, what difference does it make? If may verbal na pag no, no or pag tangge, it just makes it easier uh, to prove yung lack of consent. But as with most ano ha, sexual violence cases, yung lack of ano, um, yung verbal na, uh, what you call this, um, resistance, lack of verbal resistance or lack of physical resistance, uh, it's not an element, it doesn't negate the crime. Meaning, um, ito, favorite ano lang, I'll go into another crime, ha? not just itong voyeurism, but for example, even with um, sexual violence or rape, uh, yung pag hindi ka nakatanggi, hindi mo nasabi na ayoko or no. 
I'm not giving my consent or hindi ka nakalaban, hindi ka nakasigaw, hindi ka nakatakbo, it doesn't matter. It doesn't negate yung rape as a crime. As long as sa, sa loob mo ay alam mo hindi ka nag-consent or non-consensual siya, ay rape pa rin siya or in this particular case in your in your question, it's still voyeurism. So it doesn't matter. Again, the only difference it makes is, is that it will only just make it easier to prove na walang consent. But that doesn't mean that we can't um, still prove yung lack of consent through if you say so, di ba? If nagkakasuhan na and then you say in your narration, wala talaga akong consent. Na nakita ko yung ano, yung naki, pwede kasing ano eh, nakita ko yung binibedyohan ako pero nat- natakot kasi ako to say anything ganyan kasi baka pag pagka uh, tumanggi ako or parang nagreklamo ako, baka saktan ako or baka ko nang gawin sa akin or may mga ganun eh. There's so many things that can go on in your head. So, ano naman, it's, um you can still, it doesn't, again, it doesn't negate the, the crime. So, it doesn't matter. It just makes it easier to prove. Yun. Ayan. So, hopefully, ay nasagot din yung um, tanong ni Ms. Alex. So, thank you, um Attorney Alex, then, for shedding light on that. Um, so far, we don't have any more questions, but I do have um, a clarification. For example, Attorney Alex, um, kasi, um, correct me if I'm wrong, kahit yung storage no, uh, na banggit nyo kanina is punishable by law. Um, if ever, halimbawa na hindi ko alam na nasa phone ko siya, halimbawa if you sa akin, tas like, I didn't even view it, I didn't even click on it, is that something na punishable then? Um, not, ano ha, not necessarily. Uh, if for example hindi mo talaga alam uh, I'm, I'm I'm assuming ano ah yung possible scenario nito ay may forward sa yo. Tapos hindi mo binuksan yung message at mm-hmm. all. Um pwede mo kasing defense yun eh that you weren't aware that it was sent to you. Um you did not copy, you did not reproduce, you did not secure copies. It was sent to you, you did not even know na parang na, hindi mo nga binuksan yung link or anything you can you can see that as a defense so okay lang naman yon i understand the concern no kasi maraming ganyan online eh na yeah, nag-relate no mga nagfo-forward ng mga links yes oo oh, oh, eh, it just reminded me dun sa mga proliferation din sa group chats um we have um and thank you attorney Alex for shedding light on that so i ayan um at least na naklaro na sa akin no how and yung extent ng involvement pag ganun um siguro ito na lang yung last question no so it's again from miss emilia so she asks um in cases when there is a google driver the su- survivor uh, must ask to save the files would it be possible to ask the respondent to purge the files in cases, Google Drive, survivors ask to save the files. Clarify ko po yung question. Po. Kasi po, yung, uh, yung complainant namin was uh, given uh, the Google file and password of the respondent. And dun niya sinisave yung files. No? So, tinatreten siya. Kasi, tapos, kailangan niya gawin yung videos and all photos na sisave niya ron. Um, Sabi ng respondent, wala na raw yung mga files yun kasi ang agreement nila ay buburahin nila right after ma-enjoy. Um, but I'm worried that the respondent actually kept them and mm-hmm. will later sell them. Mm-hmm. So yun po yung worry ko. Um, and malakas yung kutub ko <laughs> na baka mangyari yun later. So... Um, wala kaming proof na na-store niya or nasa kanya pa. No, pero yun lang, siguro hindi siya pwede but could it could we work our way around uh, having you know these files purged if if they're there. Kaya. Ah uh, yes, actually um merong related question to this eh, yung bit of habeas data. Ah uh, that's an option. Um, if you have reasonable, ano, uh, if you have reason to believe na sinave pa rin yung files na hindi pinurge, um, you can file a petition for an issuance of writ of habeas data. How this is done operationally, if, if mag-succeed yung petition and the writ is issued, um, pwede kasing i-check, i- i- eh, i- parang may search na magaganap 
and then if that um, they come across those files, they will delete it. They can the court can direct that. Um, so pwede yon. Uh, you will just have to allege in yung petition ganyan yung uh, circumstances why you have reason to believe. Uh, pwede yon. And then for um, yung sa ano naman yung yung takot na ishare. Uh, of course, if that happens, ganyan, ay um, pwede rin sila maging liable for the anti-photo video voyeurism if that happens. And then we also have yung kanina na pag-usapan na extrajudicial um, remedies na pwedeng yung uh, stop NCII.org, ganyan, just to prevent no yung, fi- yung sharing, posting online, um, or even storing in mga... Uh, social media na mga platforms, ganyan, yung mga sinishare group chats or groups, Facebook groups or something, uh, pwede rin yun. But um, in, in terms of legal, uh, you can file that petition uh, to have that done. Um, what else actually? Uh, if for example, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen this in action, but in legally, ha, uh, I think theoretically this is also possible. Uh, if yung ano, um, for example, if pasok to sa anti vowsi Act, meron kasing mga protection orders uh, na remedies available under the Act. Yung Barangay Protection Order, Temporary Protection Order, Permanent Protection Order, which can be issued by either the Barangay or the courts. Um, that can be included. If if kasama dun yung threat no, na um, to store uh, the photos and then to later on share them, pwedeng ipasok dun sa scope ng protection order yung uh, to stop the the perpetrator from doing that otherwise ay yun mababiolate niya yung protection order that's that, that's also possible aside from yung petition for get the fabius data Okay, so hopefully that answers Miss Emilia's concern as well. And that will be our uh, last um, Q&A uh, question for this one. So ayun, actually, um, we can head on to unwrap uh, all of the discussion. I really learned a lot. Um, uh, it's really interesting, I think, to even go and study law talaga. And um, as hopefully naging useful itong discussion for everyone who might be interested to look into the crime that is digital voyeurism. Um, and maybe soon in the future we can talk about uh, this more no so another session um yeah so very i think i'll just kind of uh, go through uh, a very, very important things that i learned for example um yung paging yung importance talaga ng consent across the process of of intimacy online especially in a very ano na talaga ang technology ngayon and yun we have existing laws that do address this um kailangan talaga na knowledgeable uh tayo when you want to help as well so ayun um really helpful and thank you again attorney alex for shedding light on these cases so ilan lang to no na mga cases kanina may na flash ako on um, references just to um, say na these are real and if you want to look into the cases yan reported talaga po siya sa media so ito po sila um, that's it uh, before we go and end this discussion attorney Alex would you want them uh, to will you want to invite them po sa mga any activities uh, yes um, we'll be announcing yung uh, roster of activities dun sa mga different organizations ko no uh, I won't go to them um, in detail muna. I uh, will we'll be posting more information on it. But meantime, please do follow our um, accounts. Yung una yung sa Youth Against Sexual Harassment, which I mentioned earlier, you can find us on Facebook. Um, and then we offer services. Uh, yung Yash has a pool of uh, lawyers. No? If you have any concerns, kanyan, if you know any survivors na who need legal assistance, um, we can help with that. Uh, we also have partner organizations um, offering yung mga different services yung nabanggit ko kanina like Luna's Collective and Kerry. Um, so pwede rin kami, we can, we can ano rin, refer you to them if ever. Um, and then yung second org ko, it's a women's sports organization, yung uh, Binibini's PH. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook also. Um, it's uh, the organization that uh, manages yung ating women's ultimate national team. Um, it's important because we recently launched a campaign against um, sexual violence and gender-based discrimination in sports. 
Uh, so meron din kami mga roster of activities for uh, Women's Month. So we'll keep you posted. Just um, follow our pages, please. Thank you so much. And um, Yan, we will also plug from our end, FMA, we will be having um, activity as well. So we have uh, for your page, a talk on news reporting on TikTok. This will be next week naman. No? So ayan, uh, mag-register po tayo. This is in partnership with um, more organizations as well, hindi lang FMA. So ayan po. Um, it is also posted on our Facebook page. And yan, please also tune into our podcast. Ito yun na siya, Eva, kanina. It's titled Anong Connect. We will also have yung audio format nito posted there as well. So abangan nyo po and you can follow us on Spotify. So if you have any feedback, questions, and, or if you want to collaborate, uh, maganda po itong usapin. Salamat po sa feedback. Uh, sana po ay, again, naging useful siya and informative. We are also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and we will be having um, discussions pa in the future. We, are, we also do Twitter spaces din eh. So ayun, um, let's follow, uh, follow nyo po ang FMA online and we will see you in our future activities. Um, last na po, no, we also have a, 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 this monthly newsletter on issues uh, about gender and ICT. So nasa social media din po namin kung paano mag-register dyan. Um, it's called Gender Scoop. So you can find and register na lang po dyan sa newsletter. So ayun, maraming salamat po sa lahat and good evening. Um, we don't want to hold you. It's already Friday. So happy weekend po sa lahat. Attorney Alex, thank you so much po. And we will email you for um mga post event stuff. So, maraming salamat po and happy Friday to everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye po. Hi, Lola H. <laughs>